Hello, welcome to my channel. This is the second part of a four part series around the Note Air 4C. And this is actually split into two pieces. The first piece, which is in a separate video, is around the details of the note taking app as well as the user interface. And then this video focuses more on the Neo Reader app as well as uh, other applications native to the device and the system settings uh, for the device as a whole. So that's how I've kind of split that up. I put ample chapters in these videos so that you can go quickly to the information that you want um, or just kick back and watch the whole video and get a tour of the device. And the tour is really the purpose of this video. It's not a review. It's more of a demonstration about what the device can do. For all the demonstrations, I'm using full cold front lighting. I just thought that would film better and highlight what's going on the screen better for the purposes of this video. Um, so it, just know that that is on full power for the uh, duration of what of these demos. Um, and then finally, there's just so much material to cover. It's just not possible to go over everything. I do try to highlight, obviously, the most important functions and the things that are of interest to me. But there are certain menus where I'm just going to say, here it is, and then move on to the next thing. And you may have questions about some of those items on those menus. And if you do, just pop those into the comment, let me know, and I'll try to respond either uh, in, to that comment directly or maybe in a future video if that kind of makes sense. So that's how we're handling that. Um, okay, having said all that, I think let's just dive right on in and uh, let's enjoy the tour. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into settings and see what's available there. And we can do that a number of ways. We saw that oh, we can either do that from the control center by clicking on this little nut icon, or we can just click on this little app icon as well. And that takes us here. By default, it'll go into your uh, Wi-Fi networks, including the one you're connected to and the ones available. Um, you have the ability to search your settings here. Uh, then you have your account. So if you have a, a books account, this is where that will appear. And if you click on that, it'll show you how you stand in terms of your storage. You can switch to other accounts. You can log out. Um, you can do account security, like you can add a phone number that's associated with the account. You can determine which servers that you'll be working with in terms of backing up your files. So there's a US one, a European one, and this VN one. Um, and presumably you want to pick one closest to you. If you want to be able to default to send stuff to an email address, you can say send to email, and then you can indicate what email you want it to send to. And then that becomes your default as you send documents or notes later um, you know, as you're working with the device. There's a Bluetooth toggle. Um, this is another location where you can turn it on or off. Um, and you can also receive files via Bluetooth and they're listed here, I haven't received any, so uh, not a thing, but that's where you would do it. If it was on, then it would start to search for Bluetooth devices and you can connect and pair here. Uh, this is where you can go on to airplane mode as well as the control center where you can do hotspot and tethering, a little data management, screencast, uh, printing. So you can basically um, attach to a printer. In this case, it found one on my network so that's available there. And if you had a VPN, you can connect that here as well. You can sync your notebooks and your documents to various accounts. So we'll take a look at those options. And there are quite a few here. And you can see those listed, 11 in all. Uh, some of the more standard ones are things like, of course, Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive, at least here in the United States. Same, oops, let's go ahead and go back into settings and we would have seen the same listing, um, actually slightly different for documents. Um, and you can see here's nine here and there's 12, so there's one more. And those are the ones that are available, but still again, the top ones like OneDrive, Dropbox, and I thought, and then Google Drive, yep, right there. Go back into settings. Okay, there is a kids mode, and as indicated, um, it does manage how you know much time uh, a kid could be on the device, uh, what content they can look at, 
and it also captures statistics. If you enable it, there's a specific pin code uh, specific to uh, your kids that they would use to unlock the device, and then this, this mode would then be in effect. If we go over to apps and notifications, lots of detail here. Um, you, know, you have a selection for all your applications, and you can even go further. And this goes into a screen that we saw when we long pressed on the device uh, on the app rather, and we were able to come to this place. So there's a lot of ways to come to the same information, uh, and this is one way of doing it. You can get your permissions, notifications, you know, default apps is nice. So basically you can indicate for these activities what application do you want to use by default. Um, app refresh modes. So you can actually select different refresh modes for different applications, and you can set those in the device, but you can also set those, or the app, I should say, you can set those in the app, or you can set those here. Uh, DPI settings, again, for each application. Um, in this case, it's only the applications that you download that you can set the DPI for. And again, all of this can actually be done just by long pressing an application and going on to manage take you to this menu, and then long pressing and going to optimize, takes you to this menu where you've got the DPI, you've got the color settings, etc. So there's a number of ways to do it, but one of them is here in the apps and notification um, selection. Then you've got desktop and screensaver, you can set your wallpaper, if you click on that, you've got four default wallpapers. You can also create your own. It tells you where you can save it. Uh, they have a, a number of screensavers that you can pick. Transparent is a fun one uh, because basically it just shows you what was on the screen. Um, and there's also some different styles that you can pick. And this is a popular one as well. We'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll apply both this one and transparent. So if I click on the power button, so that's what that would look like. Let's go ahead and do that transparent one. So here we go. Click on our power button. And it's pretty much just shows you what what was on your screen, but you get the little moon icon and the message down below. So a lot of options there. If we go, I think that does it for that. Oh yeah, so you have your, um, um, what do you show when you do power off? Um, and this is when the device is completely off. So you have to reboot it to turn it on. Uh, this is what would show up, and then uh, you can basically put some text there. You can change the position of the text. You can even select a different image. There were options going back to the screensaver um, as well that you could change some of the text items. So just a lot of uh, customization in the screensavers. Same with the home screen. So you can actually have you know this as my home screen, which is the second page, as opposed to the default. Uh, you can lock your layout here, and this is the Smart Assistant page, so by clicking on this, it would get rid of the Smart Assistant. If we click on Display, you can change the fonts and the text size. Uh, the brightness is the same brightness as we have down here. You can do a full refresh frequency. In this case, it's set to 10 taps. You've got a number of different options there, including never. Um, I have this so that if I close the cover, it will uh, turn off and go into sleep mode. Um, and then it'll automatically turn on the front light when waking up the device. There's also a number of sound toggles. So you can obviously you know, turn it on or go on mute. Uh, there's do not disturb mode, you have different toggles for different types of sounds, and then you can set some of the sounds 
itself and there are just a lot of possibilities. So a lot of um, customization. Let's go into more sound settings. You can see you can actually have it make a sound when you go into the lock screen or make a sound when you do a touch. Let's see what that's like. Okay. So if you want that feedback, it's there for you. We can click on location information. Uh, we can turn that on or off. Uh, you can set the location permission of various apps. Pretty straightforward. In terms of security, you have the ability to either fingerprints or a lock screen password, and that is a numeric one. So you can see you can do four to 16 digits. And then we have this encryption and credentials, um, and those are the options available there. We go into power. Um, this is where you can uh, you know, show the, uh, the percentage outside the battery icon, or you can do it inside or not have the percentage show at all. This is where you can have auto sleep. Auto sleep has a number of different time intervals. I've selected never, but basically this is no activity, say for five minutes, would go into sleep mode. Sleep mode is where you press on the power button and in a few seconds, the device is ready to go. Uh, power off mode in contrast, which we have down here, and those are the time intervals there, actually literally powers down the device so that you have to reboot the device in order to get it going. Uh, I haven't measured it on this device, but that can take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute depending on the device. And you see there's some other additional functions. Um, so for example, a lot of these are about what if you accidentally press the power button or close the cover, but you didn't mean to, uh, to go into sleep mode, this delay will, would make sure that you didn't you know, lose connection to the internet uh, or Wi-Fi rather as a result of that. So that's kind of what those toggles are for. And then you can see you can all these automatically turn on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. Click on storage. This basically um, gives you a breakdown of where your storage is. One thing to notice is I've barely put any documents or images into the file, and yet we start off at 43% taken. So that's mostly the system. Um, so when you get your device, you're going to have about 36 to 37 gigabytes available. The rest will be taken up by the, the system itself. And then you can go in. And you've got, um, you can either go in to look at your, these kind of macros, if you will, for your documents, you know, music, downloads, APKs for, for apps that you sideload, images, videos, Bluetooth fonts, or you can go into the folder structure by clicking on this bar here. And here's the folders. You can click on any folder, and if you have a file, it will show up there. And you have a lot of standard file management. You'll notice there's an icon down below here, and this basically changes the view. Let's click on that. There we go. So we've got more of a list view. There's a little more of a, a folder view. And if we go back to what we had before, there's the icon view. Okay. Uh, we can go to system navigation, and this is where you can set all the gestures for the device. So We'll start off with the bottom up gestures. This was all available um, during the setup process, but it was a little more limited. Now here you can go in and click on custom and there's a bunch of things that you can have each gesture do. And there's an example of the list there. And each, uh, each swipe has the same selection of items. So you can uh, change either you know, left, center, or right gestures. There's also the navigation bar as opposed to gestures. And uh, we did have this option in setup. You, you can use one of these four. These are standard um, Android um, toggles. So you've got a back button, a home button, um, that's a refresh button, that's a settings button, and so on. But you can also do your own customized version and select that accordingly. 
Uh, there's also side gestures. So there's side gestures where you can swipe up and down. That's a little more limited to things uh, like this list, you know, anything that's that's got uh, a sliding a scale, like your brightness, like your volume, etc. And it's same uh, selection regardless of left or right. Then uh, you can have gestures when you're swiping into from the sides, left or the right. And those are the options there, very similar to swiping uh, from below. If we go into more settings, uh, here's where you can do your system update. Uh, you can mess around with your language and input. Let's take a look at the languages that are available. So quite a few languages. Uh, here's where you can change the keyboard. Um, and you can even play around with the spell checker, you know, what language you're using, etc. Uh, if we go to FAQ and feedback, we've been here before uh, through the uh, feedback toggle, but here's another way to get to the same spot. And then finally, you go to about device. And it gives you a number of information, including device name, a lot of your specifications. There's Android 13, there's your RAM and your storage space, your screen resolution, and so on, including your user manual. So uh, that is located in about device. You download it, and then it ends up in Neo Reader. So that's how you get to the manual. Let's go ahead and go to the table of contents. And uh, it's you know pretty broad, but you can see it's over 114 pages, or actually it is 114 pages. Um, so it goes into quite a bit of detail about what the device can do. Okay, so let's go over the applications that are available by default on the device, and they're all listed here. We'll start in this folder called Tool, and we'll start with the Recorder, which is pretty simple. Just click on this Play button. Hey there, I'd like to record a note. You click stop, and if you click on this icon down below, you can see your recording history there. There's just one setting, so we click on the hamburger. We can have it so that if it goes into sleep mode, it will just automatically stop recording, which obviously would uh, help with battery drain and stop from creating a useless audio recording. So there's that. We have a calculator, which is you know pretty straightforward. We've talked about the nav ball already, so we'll go ahead and skip over to the clock. And you can see this is pretty similar uh, to Android where you have the ability not only to have a clock, but you can create alarms, uh, you have a stopwatch, and a timer. All that's available here. We've already talked about the notes application. Push to read is kind of an RSS um, feed. You can have some favorites. You can uh, push from your uh, the books drop. Uh, again, your RSS feeds, and I don't even know what this is, but apparently you need to subscribe to it. They've got their help center, uh, which you can scan this, and it takes you to books.com. Neo Browser is a fairly standard web browser. Here we're going to ESPN. Ah, the Yankees are coming back. So they're down 03, can they survive the series? Time will tell. But this is just basically a web browser. Not much to talk about there. Do you have a dictionary? You have the ability to download dictionaries. And currently there's three available as you can see there. Calendar memo. Um, gives you a calendar, but you can also write notes. Any type of work that you do in either the note-taking app or the reading app will be identified um, the day that you go into those documents. This will not track any of your activity in other apps, like if you're reading in Kobo or Kindle, that won't track here. You can create little memos. You can see that dot. I wrote a memo in there. You do have the ability to sync, go to today's date. You can search your memos. and you have some settings for the calendar itself. 
So a pretty basic calendar. It does not integrate with, say, Outlook or Google. So something to be aware of. You have the Play Store. So this is basically the Google Play Store. Um, all apps are available to you. Of course, not all apps run well on an e-ink device. So there are limitations to what can run well, but they are, for the most part, all available. And you do have Android 13, so that helps uh, keep the limitations down as well. There is a music player. It's only good if you download music onto the device. And I don't have any music here, so uh, there's not much to see. Of course, you can also download, you know, apps like uh, Spotify um, or you know YouTube Music, um, and those would work as well. But they would not integrate with that. That has only for downloaded files. Uh, Bookstrap, we've talked about it a little bit conceptually before, but it's a way basically where you can either receive or send files um, using the either uh, application in a web browser or the desktop application um, to bring files onto the device. If you have any images, they're available in the gallery. You have AI Assistant, which is really just a chatbot interface. You can see the name of the model up here. Um, you can record your query here, send it, it will respond and then leave a history of those here. I had a cat breed summarize query before uh, on a different device, but this was saved onto the cloud. So because it's connected to my books account, it remembered that I had run this query before and you can you know, copy it or delete it um, or continue the conversation. This is the documents application. So any doc documents that you've opened in the past will show up here. Here's the more recent ones. Here is uh, the full library. You have folders that are available. Um, you can connect to these services to download files. And if you had any uh, favorites, then you can indicate them there. Much like with the note-taking app, uh, you can see we can change how the icons appear using this, this toggle down below. Clicking on any of the documents will open up the Neo Reader app. Here we have the bookstore, and this is basically just free books that you can read using the Neo Reader app. This is the uh, file structure. We've kind of gone into this before but you've got these toggles that can take you directly to um, your images, for example, here, or you can go through your folder file structure uh, this way. And then lastly, we go to settings, which we've already gone uh, to in great detail. Okay, so our tour takes us then to the NeoReader application, and this is the main reading app for the uh, Books Note Air 4C. It's the second most important app, or maybe first important, depending on your preference, along with the note-taking application. One thing you'll notice about the Neo Reader app, it does not appear anywhere in the app selection. So you don't launch the Neo Reader app and then open up a document. The way you get into it is you do it through opening a document itself. And you can do that a number of ways. You can use this widget, for example. You can go down to your library, or you can go into your file structure. As long as the document has the file type that the reader can read, it will then trigger launching of the Near Reader application. So let's go ahead and open up this document, which is the user manual. And we'll now open up the Neo Reader, and here we are. We're going to begin our tour looking at the side floating bar. So the first thing, and there's going to be a lot to this. So the first thing that we're going to look at is this icon will mount the bar to the side of the screen. And we can hold this down oops, and drag it over. And we can mount it to the other side of the screen as well. We'll go ahead and drag it back.
made some uh, scribbles there. We can go ahead and erase those by clicking on this pen icon. It'll open up a new floating bar. And let's go ahead and click on Erase. And we're going to click on that twice. And we're just going to go ahead and erase all. And that will take care of that. First off, if we click on this icon, instead of mounting it like we saw earlier, it will return us back to the original floating bar. So that's the first thing there. Then you'll notice oops, that there are a number of uh, preset pen styles here, and you can have up to five of them. You have the same uh, pen style types, the same color options and line thickness as you have in the note-taking app. And also, as with the note-taking app, you can delete any of your presets um, by just clicking that delete button. You can also kind of make these into whatever you want. So if I want, for example, uh, a blue color, uh, ballpoint pen, then uh, that will be that preset every time I select it until I make changes. To make changes, you just click on it again, and then this window will come up. Uh, there is a zoom option, so that's what the, that is right there. You have the option of doing shapes. So if I click on it once, twice, those are the shapes that are available, the colors, the line styles, and the width. We saw briefly the erase options, but in more detail, if I click on that twice, you've got a mobile eraser, a stroke eraser, a lasso eraser where you circle what you want erased, or you can erase the entire screen, which is what we did a few moments ago. We can undo and redo. And if we click on this ellipsis, we have the ability to save the file. We have a lasso tool, and that comes in two flavors. It can either be a smart or free lasso tool. Let's go ahead and show that in action. So we'll write hello here. If I click on this, click on the lasso tool once, click on it again the second time, we'll start with a free lasso. So now all the free lasso is going to do is whatever I circle, that's what it's going to select. So let's just go ahead and do the O here in hello. And you can see only the O is selected. Um, I have the ability uh, to resize it. Um, and then, of course, I've got some options over here. Again, undo, redo. I can change the color. Those are the color options. I can cut um, or copy and paste. This selects it. And then if I select the larger context, and if I click the delete button, it will then delete that. Let's bring it back. And then this actually pages back and forth. So there's the next page. There is the previous page. So that was free lasso. So if we go in then and select lasso again and select lasso the second time, we have smart lasso. So now I'm going to circle that O. And now it knows it's part of a larger word. It didn't pick up the entire word in this case, but it did pick up the two L's and the O. And then you get the same uh, items that you can pick from above. All right, then you have the ability to fill. So let's go ahead and create like a little square there. And then if we use the fill option and we'll select it twice, this is easier. Uh, you can see we can customize this. Um, so it, you could put these things that you use more frequently so that you don't have to go through the menu bar to get to them. But in this case, this is the default. Just pick this color and it will fill the object accordingly. We can do a text box, which is pretty straightforward. And then here's the settings. Uh, you can change the size. You can double it or have it in terms of its size. You can go horizontal or vertical, as you can see there. And then finally, as with uh, this, we see this all throughout this device. You have the ability to customize this toolbar and you can click to add things and you click to remove them. And if you want to go back to the original because you don't like how you set it up, you want to start from the beginning, Reset will take you there. So that's the pen tray. Let's go back to the original floating bar, like so. Our next option down is the ability for gestures. Uh, you might turn some of these gestures off if you're finding that you're accidentally selecting them um, as you're just going about your business. You'll notice that there's this option on top that says use stylus for touch. And by turning that on, we no longer have the ability to write, but we can advance the page.
like so, or go backwards. You can also swipe to go back, like so. Let's go ahead and turn that off, and that will be important for us a little bit later. Here, you have the ability to tap to advance the screen. So if I click on this button, then you don't have that ability anymore. You have to swipe to advance. There are a number of smart tools that are available, including um, turning the page with a stylus. So earlier, remember, we uh, selected the option to use the stylus to turn pages, but it didn't allow us to write. We currently have the ability to write. So with that on, the turn page with stylus on, if I click on the lower corner, it will advance or return me to the previous page. So that's the value of that. Our next one is double tap recognition, and this has a couple aspects. So let me write the word hello. Now if I double tap, it's gonna do its OCR and convert it to text. You can also do this with a shape. So if I draw kind of a wonky triangle, like so, I can double tap. Now it becomes a nice triangle. You also have scribble to erase. There we go. Should have worked here too. Kind of surprised it didn't work. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's try this with a shape. That worked. Um, if we go back into AI, we have a couple ways to annotate. You can underline or circle. Both will bring up the same menu. So let's go ahead and show that in action. I'll underline guide. Okay, so now it's highlighted. Let me go back down to guide here. There we go. And then you have uh, a menu of options. So the first, the top of the bar allows you to underline it with different styles. There's a straight line, a wavy line, a dashed line. And in all cases, you can click on this twice and then you can change the color. Let's go ahead and go with a wavy style just for fun. There we go. We also have the ability to highlight it. And if I click on that, it'll highlight it. So notice the text is white. And then if I click on this again, I can change it to a different color. This has the same highlight, but it'll make the text black. And this is going to black it out and you can use any color you want. Uh, we'll go ahead and use, we'll use white for example, and that will black out the text accordingly. And then you can delete this uh, by clicking on that delete key. Now we got there by underlying. We could also just circle it and it gets us to the same menu. It also is defaulting to the last thing I selected, so you notice it automatically whited it out. If we go to the bottom bar, we have a few more options. You can copy the annotation. So let's go ahead and delete that. Let's keep going. So we have the ability that's going to translate it. That is a web search. You have the ability to search. Uh, here you have the ability for a dictionary app, although I should also point out that if you just hold a word down, that will bring up that in the dictionary as well. And there's more options here. You can select your dictionary here. Here are so some of your settings, um, either to do word selection or translation. You can use uh, books's custom translation engine, Bing or Google. So a lot of options there. You can share. You can generate a picture, oddly enough, and have various export settings. Let's go ahead and generate a picture based on that word. So the word was start. And it's just creating these images with the word start on it. I have no idea why you'd use it, but it's there. And then you have some options down below, including to share. So we can insert a link to a page, file, website, or notes this way. And finally, we can use AI. And AI in this case is traditional AI. This is a chatbot interface. And you can see that it inserted the word that was highlighted. So those are all the options you have when you highlight something. Let's go ahead and delete that and get rid of it. And then the last item we have is shape perfection. And this is pretty straightforward. If It's just like in the note-taking app. If I draw kind of a wonky little circle and I hold it down, it turns it into a perfect circle. And you can do that with other shapes as well. This hamburger in a circle here will open up 
the uh, main menu items within a Neo Reader. You can also get to that by just tapping on the center of the screen. It also arrives to the same location. This button allows you to zoom. Let's go ahead and real quickly zoom back to the first page and we'll go ahead and do the zoom function. I'm going to go ahead and select my area to zoom in and we'll pick these first two letters. Click check mark and now we've zoomed in to that. These next buttons will advance the page and so now that we're zoomed in, when we go to the next page, it'll zoom in on the exact same spot on the next page as we can see here. If I go backwards, that obviously returns us there. And we can also pinch to zoom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to get back to the original size. And then these just therefore then turn into normal page turn buttons since we are no longer zoomed in. If I click on this little ellipsis down below, I've got a floating toolbar settings as we're accustomed to. We can get rid of the toolbar. We can also hide the indicator. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now if I click on this icon, it disappears completely. And the way you return it is you swipe in to bring it back like so. My touch isn't particularly great, but that's the concept there. If we click on further, we'll notice that there's uh, similar options. Uh, like, well, first off, we did swiping on the side. Theoretically, that should have worked, um, but we could have also uh, limited it to just swiping from the top to prevent accidental swipes. Uh, we can change the size to be either twice as big or half of it. We can go vertical or horizontal in the orientation. It's currently vertical. And then finally, of course, we have the familiar ability to add items by clicking or removing. And if we want to go back to the original orientation, we can click reset. And of course, there's just a lot of options with this particular floating toolbar. Okay, so now let's start taking a look at the top menu, which we have up here. Uh, we're, first off, we have the ability to exit the file. And we can open up another document by clicking on that icon there. We have the ability to click on this AI assistant. And we saw this earlier, but this is basically opening up that chatbot interface. Um, but it doesn't pre-populate it as it did earlier when we highlighted uh, some text. Go ahead and get out of that. You have the option to share, and you have a lot of the same share features that, that we see elsewhere in the document, uh, which you can share with various apps. And the more apps you download, the more possibilities will be listed here. And of course, you can print as well. You have the ability to sync, and this will sync um, either with the Books Cloud or with whatever services that you've connected um, in the settings. You have the ability to do OCR. We'll go ahead and click on that. And presumably, um, if you weren't able to interact with the document, the OCR allows you then to do that. And notice it's blank up here currently. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. It's going to do the OCR. And then uh, now we have this icon here. There are two versions of the OCR work. It can either be done locally on the device, in which case there is no uh, limitation, or you can have it done on the servers, which presumably is a little more accurate, um, but there is a limit to how many times you can do that in a day. Let's go ahead and bring up the menu again. Uh, you do have the ability, again, to uh, deselect the ability to do gestures. This is the exact same functionality we saw on the floating toolbar. It's just available here on top. Same with hand touch, we saw that, and so now we can't advance the screen by clicking on the side because we've deactivated hand touch. We can then click on notes, and that will bring up the pen tray, exact same pen tray that we had seen previously. And then click on more allows us uh, more options. So this is all the same features that we saw on the floating toolbar, so just repeat it there. You can do a search, refresh. There's a ton of settings available here. Certainly won't go over all of those here. 
to have some brevity, believe it or not. So those are the uh, quick overview of the functions here on top of the bar. Just before we go any further down below, I'm just gonna go ahead and bookmark this for reference. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and now click on this and you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen, there are some icons. And then what you see um, in the menu just above it is based on what icon you've selected here. So this actually defaults to the second option, which is the progress bar. So if I swipe this bar all the way to the beginning, we return to the beginning of the document. You'll notice there are some other functions here. So you can click on undo in terms of your navigation. Uh, you have TTS ability, you have auto page turn, you can do preview, which is, you know, looking at thumbnails. And we have the same waffle grid that we're used to in other applications. We can insert a blank page to write notes. So there we go. And now this sits between page one and the next page of the document. Let's go ahead and move to the left. We're going to go into the contents. And there are actually four tabs. We'll start with the leftmost tab. And this is basically whatever table of contents is inherent in the document itself. So this is already established when the document was created. Um, and you can't manipulate this. The next icon are uh, bookmarks and uh, OCR pages. So we only clicked on the bookmark once, which I believe was this one. Yep, you can see there's the bookmark there. Uh, the rest are OCR, so if I click on this, it'll take you to the OCR page. If I click on this little button down below, it allows me to select all, and I can get rid of all of this by clicking on the delete key. If we go here, we go to our annotations, and in this case, these are the highlights that we demonstrated earlier, and they're all here on page four. So if I click on that, uh, it's referring to, like for example, we can see one of the words blacked out there, uh, and there were additional highlights, I think here and here, if I remember correctly. Finally, rounding out this menu, is, and actually let's go back to that real quickly. We can delete those just to validate that. And yep, you notice they all came back. Let's go ahead and go to our final page, which is handwritten annotations. And then this gives you thumbnails of where those exist. So that's all available in the contents page of the menu. Okay, so next up then is the style, and there are a number of ways we can change how the page is displayed. We can zoom in here as well. There's different types of ways to crop. You can change the margins and change the text enhancement to make the text look a lot darker. We can then move on to contrast, um, and there are different toggles here that you can use uh, to make your document more legible, um, and then there's the navigation option, and then there's these different modes that, again, can help it fit better on the page. Finally, you do have split view, and then here you can have either two pages of the same doc. You can have this document with another document, this document with handwritten notes, this document with text notes, and then you can have a translation page as well. You can go horizontal or vertical and change the orientation. So a lot of ways, uh, particularly from style the split view, to manipulate your document so that it can be legible because you are taking a document that normally is on an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper, or at least was designed for that format onto a much smaller screen. So these are functions that allow you to tweak the file if it's difficult to read having made that conversion. So we've explored NeoReader um, in quite a bit of detail as it relates to the PDF file, but let's take a look at a couple of the other file formats that are available and see how things might differ a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my library and we're gonna start by looking at this EPUB file, like so. And you'll notice that there is one change here on the floating toolbar, which is this 
uh, circle with the letter A in it. If we click on that, we can actually go from different modes, including a dark mode. And let's go ahead and, and switch pages so we can have a better sense. So there's what that would look like. And then if we go to the original, and light is probably about the same. Yep. So that's new. The rest of the floating toolbar is the same. If I go ahead and click on the center, uh, the menu on top is pretty much the same. You will notice though, we now have two documents open. And so I can uh, select each document by clicking on it, or I can delete it by clicking on the X. If I go to the bottom, most of this is the same, but there's two differences. Style is now different. And here you have different type of presets in terms of how the document would look. So these are kind of macros um, that you can quickly go through as opposed to trying to tweak all the individual settings. You can change your text size, the fonts, we go back to the theme. All this is different with the EPUB than it was with the PDF. And this has changed too, the refresh button. Uh, we can select here, either we would want to go with Regal or Speed in terms of our e-ink mode, uh, how you want the full refresh to handle, um, you know, how often you want to do the refresh rates are here. So this is different in, in EPUB uh, than what we saw with the PDF. Okay, I just want to show this real quickly. We do have the CBR file and actually all the um, navigation and all the menus are identical. I've made some changes here, which I don't like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the reset button and boom, we're back to the normal document. So really nothing particularly special um, uh, or different, I should say, with a CBR. You can still tap to move between pages. But let's go ahead and go back. There we go. Let's go back into here. I just want to show, uh, I kind of glossed over this a little bit, but if we go back to navigation and we go to reflow, there are a ton of options in terms of how um, the text is displayed, including margins, including font size. For example, we're currently, as you can see by the check marks, at 0.75 font. Let's go ahead and go to 1.5, click OK. It applies this to the entire document and makes the change accordingly. Uh, we can also you know, change the orientation of the text, click on OK. And so on. You can make a bunch of changes like that um, to the document. And if you don't like what you just did, it doesn't make any sense. You can click reset and you're back to normal. So that does it for this video. Um, again, remember that there are two parts to that, this video. So if you're interested in additional functionality, be sure you check out that other video as well. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. Um, the next video in the series is going to be starting to really go into the review. So we'll do things like look at the battery tests. We'll look a little deeper in the performance of the Note Air 4C versus its predecessor, the 3C. We'll look at color swatches on the two to see if vividness of color has changed. And we'll do that with and without front lighting. Um, and we'll do a Bluetooth keyboard, maybe more. And then the last video in the series will be the full review. So we're halfway, more than halfway in terms of video time. I look forward to seeing you there.